Hey, Sue Libertini. Welcome to my garden. So today it is a gorgeous sunny day and it's February, so I'm dying to get outside. So since it's sunny, I decided today is a great day to do some cyanotypes. And I've been working on making some fabric pieces so that I can quilt them together and make a pillow. And so all I'm going to do today is expose another cyanotype on fabric so that I can use that. Yes, yeah, so definitely when it's sunny like this, I like to take advantage of it. And I just wanted to show you how easy it is to make cyanotypes. So this fabric was already pre-treated. I bought it already that way. It comes in eight by eight inch by 10 inch little sections. And all I did was put some, some leaves from the garden onto the fabric. And then I placed a little piece of glass on it so that nothing moves in the wind. And I'm just gonna expose this rinse it out and then I'll have a great piece of fabric I can use for a pillow. Yes, yeah, so I, I, what I did was the two images that I'm using here. This is a fern from the garden that I um, preserved actually in glycerin and then I have it in a press so that I can use it again and again for cyanotypes. And then these are actually eucalyptus leaves that I got from Trader Joe's. So you can really, if you don't have anything in your garden, you can find stuff at the grocery store, at the flower store, to just make some botanically inspired prints. And you can you can see how the the fabric is starting to turn. Uh, it's turning like a, a bluish, a steelish blue color. I'm gonna leave this out here for, I don't know, I would say about 20 minutes based on how the sun is right now. When you get this fabric out of the container, it's like a light green color. So you're just looking for the difference between that light green and then you're looking to wait to see if this is like a steel blue color. Now what's really important is when you go to rinse this print off, I have here um, an extra piece of cardboard and I'm going to you know, cover the print up because what you don't want is, let's say for some reason when I move this, my leaf moves a little bit you know, you're going to kind of make a, an image that's smudged a little bit. So that'll, that's kind of a helpful hint, something that I've learned just doing it. I'm just going to go ahead and let this, let this expose, and then we'll go ahead and rinse it out. All right, so I just wanted you to see the color that this is right now, because I'm getting pretty close to just putting this into some water. And it's just, you know what, I, I've just found that this is trial and error. you got to just experiment a little bit and figure out what color looks right for you. But right now, this... This color blue is usually when I decide to rinse it in water. All right, so I just, I thought it would be helpful to show you what I'm using. I just purchased these fabric sheets that are already coated with the cyanotype chemical. Uh, they come in this package. These are an eight by 10 size sheet, and it's as easy as taking the fabric out and putting it down in the sun and exposing the image. And it's also very helpful because they do include some instructions on the back if you're interested in you know understanding how to do it better and then I also wanted to show you just some examples of some of the fabric that I've made here already and my plan is to put these little pieces of fabric together in a way so that I can make a pillow so you know some of the images I've made like this one here I'm not really going to use because what happened was I moved it and the image is not as crisp as I want it to be. But I did get some good images of ferns, fern leaves. I like these. I think those will make a great pillow. And then, honestly, one of my favorite images is these are leaves from, in the back there, from my mother-in-law's locust tree. So that's kind of fun, too. So anyway, I'm about ready to uh, rinse this out, and we'll go ahead and see how that looks. So I'm gonna use gloves just because I don't wanna get stuff on my hands here. Um, this is actually a safe process, so. And I'm gonna remove this and you can see what that image looks like. I wanna be quick because I don't want that area that I didn't expose to get exposed here in the sun before I get, get it rinsed. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and rinse out the chemicals and this fabric will I'll let the fabric dry and it'll be ready to use. And it's really simple. You just rinse this in, you know, cold water. 
and you're going to rinse it until the image behind, the image that wasn't exposed, is a clear white color. All right, that's looking really good. It looks like that turned out well. It's a nice, crisp image. I want to just really make sure that I get those chemicals out of there. Rinse this well. And then I'm going to just show you what it looks like here on the table. Move my cardboard over. And there you go. So that is going to be a nice piece of fabric that I can use to create a pillow. Or you can really, you can do anything that you want with this with fabric. So um, I think this just looks great. It's such a fun process to do. Yeah, so once, once all the stuff is rinsed out of here, I just let this sit outside so that it can dry and put it on a flat surface. And I have found that the easiest place to let stuff dry in my backyard is, is the metal patio table here. So you can get air underneath it. This actually dries really quickly. So I just let it sit here flat and it'll dry and then it'll be ready to use. Then I'm going to set the image by just, you know, I'm going to heat set it using my an iron and then this fabric is going to be ready to go. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. And just so that you know, as this gets exposed to the light, it will still turn a darker blue, probably within a day or two. So this will be the same color blue as this one. And these images really turned out well. So anyway, why don't you try making cyanotypes on fabric? It's super fun. Mm -hmm.